Welcome back to Mountaintop and our E-Church family and friends around the world. So glad you took time out of your Wednesday and took a moment to come and join us online. Take a moment to share this with some friends and let's keep building our numbers and expanding our reach as you become an extension of me to help spread the gospel as we teach and share and build our lives. I hope that the Lord is favoring you in this season and that even in the climate change and what's happening in our nation with the um, weather and also with um, the violence of people's lives being taken, I pray that God keeps you in a place of peace and a place of hope and trusting Him even in this season. Let's pray and we'll get started tonight into our lesson. Father, we bless you now. We thank you for your grace. You have set on us once again to come and share your word with we, your people. I pray you speak life to us, speak healing and hope, and help us, oh God, to be strong in you and the power of your might, and that we address ourselves accordingly to the weather and the climate and put on the whole armor of God. Those that are bereaved and those that are suffering right now, we pray that you strengthen the suffering, touch the hearts of the bereaved, give them words of surety and comfort, even in this season and this time. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, beloved. We are moving now into April. The year is moving fast, but I don't know when it ever slowed down. We thank God that we're still here. And the month of April, I want you to help me remember our theme, let go of yesterday and take on today. You're going to keep seeing it possibly in the chat or it'll be in the lower third of the reading. But we want to let go of yesterday and take on today. Let go of yesterday and take on today. I want to start in Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verse 19. And just for bright and brightness of text, I want to read this in the Christian Standard Bible. And he says, look, I am about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Isn't that a beautiful scripture? Beautiful as it is. I want to bring it back to some of us that really carried it in the King James, the new King James. He says, behold, the former things have passed, have come to pass, and new things I declare before they spring forth. Hmm. I will tell you of them. I wanted to read the King, New King James for you to pick up this time of, of year that we're in, in April, which is springtime. Coming into springtime and going into this season of the year, it's springing forth. Here he's speaking of a word that's springing, but I wanted you just to hear it's springing forth. And I'm te he's telling us of this great new thing he's going to do. But we want to let go of yesterday so we can take on today. I'm going to read the scripture uh, again in, in this. Now, I'm going to read it again, but I'll paraphrase the Christian Standard Bible. He says, the past events have, have indeed happened. Now, I declare new things. He's announcing them to you and I before they occur. There are, this is a prophetic language that he's speaking, that he's making an announcement or a declaration that something is getting ready to happen. The, the, the scripture here, as we see in the context, is talking to Judah and Israel. Judah particularly, God is giving them an encouragement to let go of yesterday and take on today. As he's speaking to Judah in the 43rd chapter of Isaiah and verse 16 down to 21, I'll, I may read a few scriptures in there. But he's talking to Judah and he calls them, he calls upon them to forget their struggle of becoming a nation. When we, like Judah, must believe God has a design and has a destiny for each of us. So in Isaiah 43 and verse 18, he says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. And he is letting them see that great, yes, and indeed powerful God's deliverance was as he brought them out of the exile out of Egypt. But he didn't want them to stay there in that frame of mind or that frame of thought. But go on and let's take on today. Nevertheless, this is this was what we are this is what we're supposed to do, also what they're supposed to do. As we see here is the test of we taste of his deliverance. 
And now we have to move on to his greater deliverance. So they were not to remember the exodus or even consider it for this full uh, dynamics of what happened. Yes, the remembering of it gives them faith and builds our faith and encourages us, but we're not to just stay there in that. Let me break it down. You ever been around people and they keep talking about the good old days, the good old days, the good old days, and their days gone by. And some of them are stuck in the dynamics or in the paradigm of those days and can't move on till to this day and beyond. And as you are moving or growing, they become almost irritated with you because you don't want to get stuck in yesterday. God has already done some great things, but we're looking for him to do something even greater. He tells them to see it, perceive it with your faith. By faith, grab hold to it. Much more greater things is going to happen if he did these things of old and look ahead to greater things. In my book, I want to just paraphrase, uh, not paraphrase, to uh, present again. I'm not selling the book tonight. Um, I have a book I wrote, Unplugged, The Power of Living in the Present Now. And I realized as I was studying this lesson, I wrote in there, it says, don't waste too much time celebrating your past victories or your present successes when you have so much life ahead of you. So don't get stuck with the pom-poms and celebrating past victories or even in the present successes when there's a lot more ahead in your life that God wants to do. Letting go of yesterday is, and taking on today is letting go of the past. And watch this, letting go of the past heartaches, and disappointments, victories, achievements, and take on today. I think Paul says it, it's not in my notes, but it's in your reading of your daily understanding of God's word, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forward to the things that are before me. I press on towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God that is in Christ Jesus. Um, yes, it's a new season. Put that in the chat for me. It's a new season. It's springing forth. And we're walking into this new season with confidence and victory that we can take on today because God has something great in store for us. The prophet Isaiah in the scripture is preparing God's people's hearts and minds to consider the wondrous deliverance of God to come. Tell them, them let go of what was. Don't remember the former things or keep rehearsing those things. But prepare your hearts and mind for what God is getting ready to do. You know, God will provide what you prepare for. And as you set your heart for something new, he will do a new thing in your life. I promise you he will. This is the new things that they are looking for here. They are entering into an individual attitude, but they must go into it with faith to see what God is about to do. In Isaiah 43, 19, again, he says, Behold, I will do new things. I will do a new things. I want you to read that again. God is saying in Isaiah 43 and 19, Behold, or grab with your attention, set your sights on this. I will do a new thing. Behold causes us to focus our attention on God. He is the one speaking. He himself is going to do this new things, new wonders, new deliverances, new acts of God. He's ready to do them. In Isaiah 42 and 9, note the contrast of the closeness of the scriptures. He said, now it's springing forth. It's jumping off the charts, people of God. It's happening in the spirit realm. It's being manifested in the earthly realm. It's, being, it's springing forth. Isaiah 42 and 9, behold, the former things have come to pass. It happened. You were there. They have come to pass. And now new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The former things and the new things, these things are contrast between each other. The former things and the new things, new things and the things yet set forth to come. They are in a contrast between each other. There's they speak of steps of advancement, steps of advancement. God is advancing you. He is upgrading your life and is upgrading my life. New things are already in 
inceptive. They're being developed in the spiritual realm. Watch what I keep saying to you. God is processing. He is progressively moving forward, and he's developing something in this spiritual realm, and he's getting ready to manifest it. I decree it is so, that he's going to do new things, but you and I must let go of yesterday and take on today. It's already developed. Something good is developing because of the seed of the word of God and the progress that it brings. New things are coming to you and I, and he's bringing them to us in a way that they cannot be stopped. God's word is a seed. Faith is a substance. We speak the things into our world. God is saying here, I'm doing this, Clinton, and it can't be stopped. Can you step into faith with me tonight and, and see that God is doing something new? What has happened has been great. It's been wonderful. It's been pleasant. It's been amazing. But I like new things. Come on, ladies. Put it in the chat. Say, I like new things. Come on, brothers. Put it in the chat. Say, I like new things, especially when God is doing them. When God is doing them. These are not hand-me-downs or hand-me-overs or hands up. This is new in the developments of God doing it. It is sprouting. It is coming up. It is showing its face up out the hard grounds of life. It's like a plant that's breaking through, that's, being, that's been sown a long time ago. It's already taken place. You have to excuse me as we go through this, this, this month, I might get a little bit more excited because I can feel in my spirit, man, Something is already taking place. Um, the creation is groaning. We are in birth pains. You can feel the manifestation of something great in the atmosphere that God is getting ready to do. The seed of progress has been planted. And we're in an hour now where the word of God is being like a deluge on us. One text said it'll be a famine for the word, but the church is living, living by that word, not by bread alone. And it's springing, it's sprouting, it's a new time, it's a noun time, it's being set forth and it's springing up. Long awaited, but now it's springing up. Again, we properly understand these new things must be contrasts with old things, former things, former bondage and deliverance. God worked wonders during that time. And he set the people free. The former lets me appreciate the present. Whatever has been trying to imprison, hold, stifle, or keep you bound, you got the former to look at. But don't stay there about how great he brought you out. Get up and move with me and let's take on today and see where he's taking you to. One psalm says, God has kept me alive. If he kept you alive, then he must have a great plan for your life as he has for my life. So as the former things were provided with wonderful miracles, the power of God, even so, will do new things today with wonderful miracles. Get ready for miraculous and wonderful things that take place in your life. No, eyes have not seen it. Ears have not heard it. It has not entered into the hearts. It has not been revealed yet the things God has prepared for them that love him. This text gives us also a picture of the messianic Christ coming on the scene as a new thing. As Moses was a deliverer for God's people, now he's bringing a greater deliverer. that will come, he did. He died, he did. He was crucified, he did. On Golgotha's hill, buried and rose again. Three days later, new things. A deliverer came, but none like Jesus Christ. He says, my own arm brought forth this salvation. New things let go of yesterday. And let's take on today. Isaiah 43, 19. Look at it again. Shall you not know it? One text says it. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Please meditate. On the scripture with me tonight shall you not see it yes i'm gonna see it roads in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts it brings the text 
in Isaiah 43 to a radical change. A revolutionary character steps into this new thing. If you don't see it one way, I'm going to show it to you this way. Shall you not see it? In other words, you don't want to miss the next move of God. You do not not want to be looking away from what he's doing now, back on what he did years ago. Our hearts always go back to yesterdays and days gone by. It's called memory. Memory helps me remember, and but also encourages me to move forward. You're going to see it with your eyes. Don't miss it. Even in the wilderness and the barren and desolate places where men cannot easily, men can easily be lost because there is no way of traveling in wilderness. I teach and I talk and I want you to always grab that these are, are spiritual dynamics as well as practical natural dynamics. That someone right now, and I feel you in my spirit tonight, you're wondering what are you going to do next? in between a job, you're in between a relationship, you're in between family, you're in between a city, you're somewhere wondering, where am I going to land? I'm at a lethargical place, Pastor House. I'm going to church. I don't feel anything. I'm clapping my hands. I'm singing a song, but my life now is in a dry place. It's in a wilderness place. And I know I love God and I know that he loves me, but, but I don't feel his presence right now. I'm in a wilderness. Have you been there before? Yes, you have. Did God bring you out before? Yes, he did. But now he's in a new place. You're going to see it because you're going to be there. You don't want to miss it. This wilderness and, and traveling, less, less traveled places. But God says, I'm going to bring you out of them even again. Radical change. The Lord says, I will make a way in the wilderness. He says he's going to do it. He's going to make a way in your wilderness, in your desolate places, in your dry places, in your difficult places. God's going to make a way. Put that in the chat for your spirit. God's going to make a way in my wilderness. David said, I'm walking through the valley of shadow of death, and God's with me. Wilderness of the economy, wilderness of this world, global upheaving, wilderness of all these things that's crazy going on around us. God said, I'm going to make a way in the wilderness. Deserts in that desert place, not easily traveled. Even in that desert place, I'm going to bring a fertile land of rivers of waters. Water always constitutes life. God says, I'm going to bring rivers of water and I'm going to make a highway of holiness in the desert. See, now things are happening in our lives. The Lord is building us from historical process as we look back, but we forget those things as we move forward. We're experiencing and we have experienced captivities. We've also experienced his deliverance from bondage. We've experienced seemingly God did not love us, seemingly. But we've also experienced God's love for us and us turning back to God. Behold, God is doing a new thing. Reminds me of this springtime. A few months ago, as you can contest with me, or you can also attest with me if you saw grass laying burnt and brown and dead as if it would never come back to green again. You looked at it and wondered how sleep is it? Will it wake up? But I want you before this month is over to drive past a park, drive past a patch of grass, not the artificial grass, <laughs> find some real grass and remember how brown and sleep it was. But now it's back coming luster. It might be patches of green, but give it time. It all is springing up. Time of new beginnings are happening. New life is appearing all around us. I want you to grab onto this lesson tonight with me by faith. If new life is appearing all around me, then what about me, Lord? I'm ready for my new. I want my upgrade. I want the blessings you have for me today. I know you did it back then. Hebrews tells me you're the same today, yesterday, and forever. Transferring of wealth and favor and blessings are coming to the house of the believer. What happens? Here's some points and I'm almost done. What happens, Pastor House, when God is doing new things? It requires us to stop or to step. It requires us to step into the unknown. When God is doing the new, it pushes me. It challenges my faith. 
It requires me to step into the unknown with my feelings of uncomfortability, scared and apprehensive, even unpleasant at the first. But I have to step. I can't stay where I'm at. New things. Watch it. If God is not doing the new thing, you stay still and wait for him. He will open that door for you to walk in. Number two or number three, we might not be we might be tempted to hold on to the life we once knew where everything was familiar. When God is doing a new thing, you're holding on to what was. I'm not going to let this go. I said, let it go. I got something better for you. I got something better for you. Now, do not misguide this scripture, this lesson tonight. Saying, what the pastor told me is let it go. When God is telling you to move, you move. If God's not telling you to move, don't you move. Because he's going to give you something greater. Job said it like this for us tonight. He said, the Lord give it, the Lord take it. The Lord give it, the Lord take it. He gives and he takes, but before he removes it from you, he gives something to you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Start over, Clinton. What happens when God is doing new things? It requires us to step into the unknown. What happens when God is doing new things? We might be tempted to hold on to life, to the life we once knew, where everything was familiar. What happened when God is doing something new? We need to let go of the old and trust God to embrace what he is doing right now. New things, a season of awakening, celebration, symbolizing a fresh start after months of cold and dormant quietness. Now spring has arise. Spring has arrived. God is reawakening our surrounding environments, bringing everything back to life. My prayer for you tonight. Don't miss your God moment. It's right in front of you. Don't you see it? That check in your spirit saying, not this way, that way. Stay put and go forward. The opportunities of beholding the new by hope. Don't miss your don't miss your moment, your God moment by the miss your God moment and the opportunities that he set before you by holding on to the past. When God has set something new in front of you. Walk out, walk into it, and step into it by faith. I decree tonight and I declare new mercies, new joys, new peace, new happiness, new strength, new power, new opportunities, new doors, new businesses, new financial breakthroughs, new healings, new strength, May the Lord bless you with all of these and even more. Remember what he's already done and the power that he's already displayed and step into your new. Let go of yesterday and take on today. Behold, God said he will do a new thing. Let go of every setback, every letdown, every heartache, every church hurt, every Christian hurt, every family hurt, every issue that has caused your life to be distorted. The power of God is much stronger than the pain of man. I'll say it again. The power of God is much stronger than the pain of man. Yes, what didn't break you down broke you through. I said it a few days ago. I want to reiterate it. God has fixed you. You are not built to break. So get up from there and let's go forward. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word tonight. Thank you for giving me the grace to share it with we, your people. You said you would do this new thing. I want what you have for me. Increase my faith. Build my love back up. Help me to love me and to forgive myself. To know that I am created in your image and your likeness. Let me know by faith and see it before I see it. What's coming is better than what's been. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, beloved. I pray you dove into this scripture with me tonight. It lays the foundation for our theme for the month of April. Letting go of yesterday.
to take on today. Let go of yesterday to take on today. In the name of Jesus, God bless you tonight. We love you. We'll see you real soon.